Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Monday Morning's Thought for today. Happy Burns Night. If you've got your haggis or your neeps and tatties in for tonight, I hope you enjoy your Burns dinner tonight. Uh, this is video number 201 by my calculation. Um, never did I believe that back in March 2020, at the end of March 2020, when I started doing these thoughts for the day, that I would still be doing them almost a year later. We're still in lockdown. We're still in the pandemic and these videos as i've already said will continue to happen god willing uh, through until we're back properly together again and we've re-emerged as a, as a congregation as a church but we're going to continue to do uh, these videos and try to explain further from god's word what we read on sunday now sunday yesterday we were looking at the idea of jesus talking to the the folk in parables and he uses the parable of somebody bringing a lamp into a house and he said to them, you don't put it, bring it in to put it under the bed or under a bowl. In other words, to hide it, but rather you bring it in to put it in its proper place. And this week, we're going to be looking at the use of the, the word, uh, the lamp in, in the Old Testament right through to the New Testament. This morning, I want to try and clarify something I said yesterday in, in, the, in the morning service, because I didn't have time to fully explain it. Uh, but we... we made the point, or I made the point, that Jesus, in referring to this lamp coming into the house, was actually referring to himself. Now, in some ways, this was hidden from us in English. It's not quite as obvious as it would have been for those who were listening on the beach that day. They would have heard Jesus use this phrase, the lamp. Uh, and in actual Hebrew, it's, it's not a lamp, but it is actually the lamp. And yet you, the, the Amplified version is the only version of the Bible I can find that actually uses the phrase the lamp instead of a lamp. And there's a huge difference there because when Jesus used this phrase the lamp, all of a sudden it was like a, a trigger in, in the Jewish mind. All of a sudden they were taken back to the Old Testament to the times when the phrase the lamp was used to refer to the lamp of God. In other words, meaning God's word or God himself, or indeed on some occasions, the reference to the coming Messiah being God's lamp to the people. So when, when Jesus would have said it, he wouldn't have actually said, as we read here, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? What Jesus would have said, or Mark translated into the Greek, was quite simply, the lamp does not come into the house. Now, we have it in English as a lamp. In other words, it's a figure of speech. Would you bring a lamp into the house? All of a sudden, we've lost what Jesus actually said. The lamp does not come into the house. Now, you might think there's very little difference between the lamp and a lamp. But in, when Jesus said the lamp, all of a sudden, those who were listening would have said, hang on, he's referring to, to something that we know about. He's referring to God's word. He's referring to the Torah. He's referring to the promised Messiah. He's comparing himself as being the lamp. And the phrase, the lamp does not come, is usually a phrase that is used for, for somebody. In other words, a lamp can't move by itself into a house, but the, a person can come into a house. So Jesus was saying something very interesting here. He was basically saying, I am God's lamp. I am the promised Messiah. And you don't bring, the, the promised Messiah doesn't come into your house because uh, for you to hide him away, for you to pretend he's not there or, or just to carry on as if he wasn't there. So there's this very real sense that Jesus was saying to the people that day, I am the lamp and that this lamp as myself, I don't come into anyone's house in order to be, to be hidden away. And that's a very powerful message when you think about it. Jesus wasn't just making a, a statement through a parable about what to do with a lamp that comes into your house. But Jesus was actually speaking to people who had ears to hear and could understand the reference that he was making to himself, speaking about the Old Testament and this idea of the lamp. And we're going to be looking a little bit more into that this week. Sometimes these things are lost on us. Sometimes we simply skim over our Bibles and we were happy just to read the words there and, and we don't let them sink into our hearts. Can I encourage you today to either get yourself a good commentary or get yourself maybe a, a thesaurus, maybe get yourself a, a, a Bible that has a study notes in the bottom of it, etc. So that when you read God's word, you also cross-reference it with the bits at the bottom. So you, you're not just skimming along the surface, but you're allowing yourself to, to drop 
a little bit deeper into God's word because there's so much there that so often we don't fully understand because we read it on just one superficial level instead of taking time to pull back the language, to pull back the thoughts that went on there, to cross-reference it with other uses in the Bible. And so can I encourage you to, to as we thought last week, to go deeper into God's word and to take time don't give yourself a huge passage to read, but just take a small passage and work at it until you get so much out of it that you, you couldn't have believed it was there in the first place. So that's the thought for today, this Monday morning. Take time to read God's word carefully. Don't just take it at face value, but allow yourself to study it and work it through and understand it perhaps a little bit better. And by doing so, you, you will get so much more from it. And, and I do believe that when you do that, you also get excited about telling other people what you find in God's word that day. This is uh, Monday morning's thought for today. Thanks for being with me. Hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow morning. God bless.